Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1529. Hey, this is our last video about dynamic arrays, at least for now. And in this video, we want to talk more about the filter array function. And in specific, we want to talk about an AND and an OR logical test. Now, the dynamic arrays, the new Excel calculation engine and the filter array function are only available in Office 365. Now, back in 1521, we talked a lot about the amazing filter function. And below in the comments, Peter Bartholomew posted an alternative solution. But before we look at his amazing alternative solution, I want to go over to the sheet AND and OR. And on this sheet, we want to distinguish between an AND logical test and an OR logical test. Now, if we're running an AND logical test, we might ask a question like this. Of each record, is the customer equal to Google? And is the sales rep equal to FAM? Notice for this record, I get a TRUE and a TRUE. That means the AND logical test will deliver a TRUE to the cell. If I come down here and ask the same question, hey, are you equal to Google and you equal to FAM? TRUE, FALSE, that will deliver a FALSE. In order for an AND logical test to deliver a TRUE, all the tests have to come out TRUE. Now, that's different for an OR logical test. We can run as many logical tests as we want, and one or more trues will trigger the OR logical test to deliver a true to the cell. So for example, if I'm asking, is the customer equal to Google, or is the sales rep equal to FAM? Well, this is equal to Google, true. This is equal to FAM, true. So I get two trues. Well, because the OR logical test is one or more true, then of course, for this record, the OR test delivers a true. If I come down to the next row, is this equal to Google or is this equal to FAM? True, false. All I need is one, so I get a true here. Similarly here, is that equal to Google? False. Is that equal to FAM? True. All I need is one, so I get a true. Notice, for this first record, I got two. Now, later in this video, when we're doing the filter function and we're running array calculations for an OR logical test, we'll actually get a count of two for an OR logical test. But for this row, we'll get a count of one. And so we'll have to see how to deal with that. If we were doing a different OR logical test, and the question was, is the sales rep equal to FAM or Chantel? Notice, this is asking a question of a single column. So I'd ask, hey, are you equal to FAM? True. Are you equal to Chantel? False. In this case, we can never get a count of two. We can either get one true on one side or the other. But we're never going to get two trues. Now, the next thing we want to do is calculate each one of these logical tests. And we can't use the AND function or the OR function. Now, actually, technically, for this example, we could. But when we get over to our array calculations, we can't use these. These functions, AND and OR, deliver a single true or false. And when we're filtering, we need an array of trues and falses. So we're actually going to switch over to running this logical test using math operators. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key, and our first logical test that will deliver a true or false is the customer for this record equal to whatever's up in that cell. And guess what? When we're running an AND logical test, the math operator is multiplication. We run our second logical test. And I'm going to enter this Control Enter, double click, and send it down. When we evaluate our array operations and our filter function, we will see arrays like this. 0 will mean do not include that record. 1 will mean include that record. Now, the way this works and why it comes out as a number is if I evaluate each side individually as a logical operation, well, of course, these are trues or falses. It's the math operator that converts Boolean values. That's a fancy word for true and false. True will be 1. False will be 0. 
So if I F9, of course, math converted true times true to simply 1. In essence, it's 1 times 1 equals 1. Now I'm going to click Escape. Down here, this and logical test has a false and a true. So when we use a math operator, for us, multiplication means and. 1 times 0, of course, is 0. Now let's try an OR logical test. Well, that's the first logical test, checking if this is equal to Google. But we can't multiply. We want to add. When you do an OR logical test and you're using math operators, plus is the correct math operator. So I have my two logical tests. And of course, this explicitly explains why we get a count of 0, 1, or 2. If I Control Enter, double click, and send it down, we do get 1's and zeros. But what's happening, if I evaluate each one of these, is now the math operator converts trues to 1. So we get 1 plus 1, F9 is 2. Down here in the next cell, 1 plus 0, of course, will equal 1. And when we run an OR logical test on two different columns, this is what our array of numbers will look like inside a filter. When filter sees 2, it will include the record. 1, it will include the record. 0 will be the only number where that tells filter do not include the record. Now, the arrays of trues and falses when we do an OR logical test on a single column will look different. The first logical test is I'm asking of the sales rep for this record, are you equal to FAM? Plus, for an OR logical test, and watch this. We have to click on the same cell two different times. We're actually asking two different questions of the same cell. This question, of course, is are you equal to whatever's in that cell? Now if I Control Enter and double click and send this down, we're never going to get anything but 1's and zeros. It's not possible for the cell simultaneously to be both Chantel and Fan. So these are explicitly in the cells pictures of the different types of arrays that we can create inside the filter function. But there's even more to this story. If we scroll down here, what is considered true and false in Excel? Well, we already saw that 1's and 2's were considered true. But actually, a true in Excel is true or any non-zero number. That means 22 or minus 5,000. Those are both trues. For Excel to understand false, false, or zero. Now, there's all sorts of functions, including our filter function, even the conditional formatting dialog box that understand these as trues. Now, I did something silly here. I have these crazy formulas. But notice, we have zeros and ones. Of course, and is going to deliver a false. But if the AND had minuses and positives throughout all the logical tests, we'd get a true. Same with the OR. Notice minus 11 and 99 are considered true, so OR delivers a true. The same thing happens in IF, in NOT, in IFS. And look at this crazy formula. I said, hey, filter, please filter this. And this is an array of the same size. And look at this. Any non-zero number will tell filter to include that record. I should have added some formatting so I did so we could clearly see that November 2nd is included. Now, this seems crazy that minus numbers would be included as a true. But here's an example. We have dates and sales. And we just want a column that says activity for any non-zero number. Our sales hopefully are mostly positive. But occasionally, we have credits. The zeros, the empty cells, we want to show 0 or maybe no activity. Notice that the if function is made shorter because they program logical tests just like they program the filter include argument. That argument understands any non-zero number as true. So as I Control Enter and copy this down, sure enough, Minus 3.25 triggers the value if true. And what if we wanted down here this data set to only include records that had non-zero sales? I'm just highlighting that column. Close parentheses and Enter. That is pretty wild. 
add some number formatting, and we have our data set. Include has no problem. Anything that is non-zero is interpreted as true. Now, with a firm understanding of AND and OR logical tests and the math Boolean operators, and thinking about the goal of what this formula is supposed to do, right now the goal is to run an AND logical test. And we can see customer Google, sales rep fam. But the trick was is that if I delete something, then the logical test changes. It's no longer an AND logical test. I just want to run the test on customer. Control Z. Similarly, if I delete that, I want to run just a logical test on sales rep. Control Z. Now, this is the original formula, and it's a lot longer than the one Peter showed us. Now, watch this. I want to move this over here. I'm going to point just to the cell that houses the formula. And when I see my Move cursor, I'm going to click and drag. And it moves the whole spilled array. Now, I want to run just the logical test on customer. So in parentheses, I'm going to say, hey, customer column, how many of you are equal to Google? Right now, we don't have any math operators. So when I spill this, I get an array of trues and falses. That says which rows we want just on the customer column. If I delete this, though, they're all false. And since we're going to need an array for the customer side and an array for the sales rep side, if we were to multiply this, when this is deleted, every false will convert everything on the other side in an AND logical test to a false. So somehow, when that cell is empty, I need all trues or all ones. No problem. This is what Peter said. He says, guess what? We can add at the beginning is blank, close parentheses, and then add. We're asking just of a single cell, are you empty? That gives us a true. But because we're doing an OR logical test, and right now this has nothing but falses, when we do the OR logical test, True plus false is 1, true plus false is 1, and so on for the whole array. So whereas back in 1521, we ran an if formula and then chose between two arrays, this time we're just going to take whatever this second array is, plus is blank, and in both cases, it'll give us just what we want. Now Control Z, I'm going to spill this, right? So now we have minus the date number formatting an entire column of ones. However, if I bring this back to Google, now on this side, F9, we have our correct array of trues and falses. But because is blank comes out false, F9 with an OR logical test, false plus false is 0. False plus false, 0. But false plus true, that will give us a 1. Escape. Now, this is only one half of the AND logical test. On the other side, I do the exact same test, but on the sales rep column. And I'm going to say, anyone in the sales rep, are you equal to fam? Close, close. Exactly the same logic. I'm either going to get all ones when that's empty, or the correct array of ones and zeros when it's got something in the cell. Now when I spill this, I can see the AND logical test is working. Right here, we're just checking for sales rep fam, control Z. And when I delete this, the correct single column test for Google will work. And if we delete both, this better be complete ones, meaning give me all the records. Control Z, Z. Now I simply put that inside a filter. There's the whole table, comma, include. Close parentheses and Enter. Now I added some number formatting there. But there we have it. That much shorter formula there or this much longer formula. Now Peter gave us that cool formula. But also below the 1521 video, John Borg said, hey, what about an OR logical test? We want to say, hey, show us all the records for customer Amazon or sales rep Chantel. Well, we're going to do filter on the entire table. But the include, we're going to run two logical tests. We'll start with the customer column and ask, are you equal to Amazon? Plus, the second test will be, 
anyone in the sales column equal to Chantel. And the beautiful thing that we saw earlier is when I F9, of course, because I'm running this OR logical test on two columns, I'm going to get ones, twos, or zeros. The zeros are the only rows that will be excluded. Control Z. Now, unlike our first example, when we left these two cells empty, we wanted to show all the records. If both of these are empty, I don't want to see anything. So I'm going to use the third argument. If empty, which means they tried to find empty cell, empty cell, then I want to show none. And so now when I hit Enter, that spills. If I get rid of Chantel, there's looking for just Amazon records. Control Z. Now we're looking for records just on Chantel. That's the OR logical test. And if I delete them both, none. Control Z. All right, that was a lot of fun with the filter function. We saw how to do a straight OR logical test here. Back over here, we combined an OR logical test and an AND logical test. And it's always awesome to hang out on our online Excel team. Thanks to John Borg for that question about OR. And thanks to Peter Bartholomew for this much shorter include argument. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including our next video, which will not be about dynamic arrays, but we'll get back to the MSPT DA series. All right, we'll see you next video.